Welcome to God's Healing Word, a prayer and healing school with my mom, Trina Hankins. And the Lord put it on her heart to have this prayer and healing school every single week so she can help you and teach you how to pray and also teach you how to receive your healing. There's so many people in need of that right now. They feel desperate. They want to know how to pray, how to get answers, and they also really, really want to receive their healing. So this is going to be a powerful time. I encourage you to open your heart and let's get ready for the word. Praise God. And so we've been focusing on healing and how to receive God's Word as it, we take it like medicine. Yeah, I remember when I was young, I always go back to my testimonies because I know them. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Uh, but I was sick a lot and I had asthma. I wanted to be healed. I uh, would try to go up in every prayer line. Somehow it just wasn't getting it. My faith. I must be the person that God doesn't want to heal, and that kind of thing it was in my mind. What's wrong with me? But then I remember a young fellow came to our front door in Burlington, Colorado. His name is Dean Wall, and God bless him. He's in heaven now, but he brought to us a box of cassette tapes and books by Brother Hagen, Kennedy Hagen. We'd never read those before. And so we thought, hmm, wonder what this is. He said, they're really good. I heard him at a full gospel businessmen's meeting back in the 70s. And uh, so we began to read these books. And they taught us how uh, to pray the prayers in, found in Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3. Pauline prayers told us uh, that we have authority as believers that uh, Jesus said, to say to the mountain, Mark eleven twenty three, you're a believer. Oh, wow, that puts me in a category as uh, God. I can walk with God. I can work with God. I can know His will. I, my prayers had a, a lot of times been, Lord, if it's your will. Now, there's a point where we pray that prayer, you know, like, should I go over here? Should I go over there? Uh, what is your will? Or making a dedication. Lord, what do you want me to do in my life? Whatever your will is, I will do it. But there's other places in our life, other areas in our life where we must open the Bible because this is God's will. And this is a final authority and we see what God's will is. How do you find God's will? Well, how did he act throughout the Old Testament? How did he act through the New Testament? What did Jesus do? Jesus came. He said, I don't do my own will. I do only that that the Father does. I do what he says, nothing else. And what did Jesus do? He went everywhere, healing, preaching. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. So you know that Jesus' will to the poor was, you don't have to be poor. <laughs> good news to a poor man is, look, there's a supply for you. He came to uh, take the power of oppression and depression, possession of the devil, and break it. And Jesus went everywhere healing the sick. Acts 10, 38 says he went everywhere, uh, that says it, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. He went everywhere and he uh, destroyed the works of the devil. And so you see the will of God is to set us free. And you go back to the beginning, Genesis, how God created a garden, beautiful world, put Adam and Eve in it. There was a paradise of pleasure. There was no death, no sickness, no thorns, no bugs, no mosquitoes, no germs, all of that, no disease. That was God's will at the beginning. And until Satan came in and deceived Eve and Adam made the decision to follow Eve, took that forbidden fruit, disobeyed God, and he was pushed out of the garden, taken, driven out of the garden. Then is when sickness, 
death, murder, hard life, all these elements that come from the kingdom of darkness, that's when they started coming in. Well, I'm so glad that John 10.10 10 says, Jesus said, the thief, he identified the thief, the enemy, the devil, comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. I would say that sickness and disease, the coronavirus, all of that has come to steal your time, your health, your finances, steal your loved ones, to kill them, to destroy jobs, destroy, you know. So where did that come from? Is it judgment from God? No. That came from the pit of hell. And uh, people who, who would like to propagate something like that, to destroy people. But Jesus, on the other hand, in John 10, 10 said, I have come that you might have life. You might have life more abundantly. So Jesus in the New Testament, he said, I'm doing the works of the Father, the will of God. And everywhere he went, he healed the sick. He cleansed the leper. He said, raise the dead. And he told his disciples, freely you have received. Now you do what I did, freely give. And so Jesus in uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, uh, fifth chapter, excuse me, and also in the sixth chapter, it says um, in verse 15, Luke 5, 15, but so much the more the news spread abroad concerning him. And great crowds kept coming together to hear him and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And then in Luke 6, 17, just the next chapter over, here again, you see the same thing. Um, Jesus came with them, took his stand on a level spot with a great crowd of his disciples, vast throng of people from all over Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast, the Tyre and Sidon. They came from everywhere. They heard about Jesus, and they came with a purpose to hear him and to be healed by him of their diseases. And that word healed, to be cured, the Amplified Bible says to be cured, that word healed in the Greek is therapeo, and that means to be relieved of disease in the Greek. And so as they came every day, you see that they came back again and again and again, and they heard Jesus. Now, I don't think they just heard him nonchalantly, you know, or they were not the people that were arguing in their minds with Jesus, but they were receiving everything that Jesus said. And they were thinking about it, and they were acting on it. And as they did that, they were receiving that word that came out of his mouth, which was the will of God, which was life that would bless them, and it was abundant life that came out of his mouth. It was substance. That word life is zoe in the Greek, and it's a substance that's in God. It's what is in heaven. It's what is in the river that flows from the throne of God. Wherever that river goes, Ezekiel 47 says there's healing. And so, <laughs> my, out of Jesus was flowing healing rivers, words of life was flowing joy, peace, love. Uh, the only time he got angry was at religion. <laughs> and he, he could call religious leaders some pretty strong words because religion will tie you up, condemn you, kick you out, and push you down, walk on you. You know, but God, the word of God is not religion. It's the words of life. And, uh, you know, we used to sing this song when I was growing up, sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. So as we study the word today, I want you just to ring out all the life that you can. Just savor the life that's in the Word of God.
that comes to us today. Praise God. Healing power is in his word. In verse 19, Luke 6, 19, it says, All the multitude were seeking to touch him. For healing power was all the while going forth from him and curing them, saving them from, from severe illnesses and calamities. So this means that it wasn't just like a mere headache or, you know, itchy skin or whatever. It was severe illnesses. People came to him broken and torn up by disease and by calamities. And so it says they were seeking to touch him. Isn't that interesting? They just wanted to get close and, and touch him. And so something about Jesus' ministry involved contact. He would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. He taught us to do the same thing, Mark 16. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It says they wanted to touch him. So not only was he touching them, but they would reach out and touch him and they would be healed. Well, there was that woman in Mark, the fifth chapter, and uh, she heard about people touching Jesus. There must have been some testimonies, people coming from those meetings saying, wow, I'm well. Uh, Jesus touched me or I touched him. And there was power that was in his clothes that came out of his clothes and it came into me. What was that power? That was that life, that zoe. It's a substance that's in God. It's a spiritual substance. You know, Jesus talked about in John 3, um, believing in him. John 3, 16, he said, Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. There it is. Zoe, the substance of God. It will cause you from perishing, go from perishing to living. It's not just living forever, but it's the kind of life that God has in him. It's Zoe. It's a substance. So we're going to kind of look at that substance found in the Word of God, which comes out of God. So if it came out of God, it's full of life. So we put a, a high uh, expectation on the Word, a reverence for God's Word, and um, a, a worship. We worship His Word. He and His Word are one. There's life in His Word. So the testimony that we talked about was that many people touched His clothes even. When they came to hear him, they reached out and they got a hold of his clothes. And when they did that, he had so much life in him, his clothes even had life. Wow. So if he went to his closet, I'm sure there was life in all his clothes. I'm, wow. It was an aura around him of life. Wow. You can be like that. We can be like that. And we are like that in this world. People around you can get around you and sense there's energy in you. There's life in you. You know, people who study, you know, um, uh, what is it, Just crystals and all that, you know, and they're into that, that kind of thing. They can sense energy, and they're always going for it. There's negative energy in that. But in God, there is, you know, He's full of energy. His energy raised Jesus from the dead. That's life. And so that same substance, that Zoe, power of God. Come on, we need to believe in the power of God. Have faith in the power of God that's in His Word and that's in when we reach out in faith and lay hold on Him. Now, He's not here anymore, but the Holy Spirit is here. He sent the Holy Spirit. So when we recognize, Holy Spirit, you're talking to me, you can sense you can reach out and receive the energy, the Zoe power, the Zoe life of God that's flowing in His Word and in the Holy Ghost. 
So today, while we're talking about healing that comes through His Word, His Word is life, it's full of power. Jesus said uh, in John 6, I think it's verse 63, my words are spirit and they are life. So that spiritual substance called zoe is in his words. So as they came to hear and to be healed, then that zoe was going through the atmosphere and coming into their ears, coming into their eyes and into their hearts. They were repeating it. And then acting on that word, reaching out and touching Jesus' clothes or touching him and receiving the energy, the living word of God. And they were leaving that place well. They were going home. They were telling their family members. They were, you know, testifying what Jesus had done to them. What would happen if we went to the grocery store and or wherever we work or whatever and the Ask God, God, give me some opportunities to testify what Jesus has done for me. You know that the life of God is in you. And when you begin to testify, the Holy Spirit comes on your words. And your words are containers of energy from heaven that will drive out depression, drive out sickness, drive out uh, confusion. You know, there's so many. We were just down in South Louisiana this last week. And there was hurricanes, two hurricanes. And as we talked to different people, you could see the discouragement in their voices. You know, everywhere was devastation. Their homes were destroyed. Their places of work were destroyed. Their stores, restaurants, everything. Just piles of trees everywhere and homes gone. Well, you see that in their eyes, in their voices. But as you begin to speak the word, the word is full of life, the word is full of hope, then that drives out the discouragement and hope comes. And I tell you what, just being there in Lake Charles, Kevin and Elizabeth Burns in their great church, we saw the light of God, the life of God, hope of God. It was conveyed through words, the gospel. It's a power of God. And that gospel brings life. Amen. And that's what Jesus came to do in Luke 4. He said, I've come, and I've come to bring some good news. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Cast out devils. Amen. To heal the sick. And so when people receive that good news, then they got to tell about it. Got to tell about it. And that's called a testimony. And you overcome with that testimony, but also it's contagious. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when you tell your testimony, somebody else is going to catch your faith. It's contagious. It's more contagious than the coronavirus. So don't mask your mouth. <laughs> don't stay home <laughs> and be afraid. But as a Christian, be bold. And you might need to wear that mask to go someplace. But what I'm saying is open your mouth with boldness and testify about Jesus. That's what this world needs. Amen. And so this woman in Mark, the fifth chapter, she had heard testimonies about people reaching out to touch Jesus. And when they touched his clothes, they were healed. So when she heard that testimony, hope came to her heart and she said with her own mouth. She owned it. She said, if it can happen for them, it happen for me. And Mark 5, 28, she said again and again. That word saying means she said it over and over and over. When she heard, she said it again and again. If I can touch his clothes, I know I will be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I know I will be whole. She said it again. If I can touch his clothes, I know I will be whole. You know, if you say things enough, that means you're going to do it. Just say it, and it starts affecting your action. It affects your thoughts. It affects your emotions and your direction and your energy. You know, when you speak the Word of God, you might start at a low point, 
But keep on speaking the word. Keep on speaking the word. Get up every day. You might be fighting depression. You might be fighting memories from the past. But get up every day and take God's word. His word supersedes anything that has happened to you. What Jesus has done for you is greater. My goodness, he took your sin. He took your pain. He's walked where you've walked. He knows rejection. Hallelujah. Take his word. Receive his word and review it every day. And so she did that. She said in her mouth and she believed it in her heart. Mark eleven twenty three. Jesus said, man, you say to the mountain, be removed, cast into the sea, shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe it. those things that you say. That word say is Lego. What is Lego? Those are the pieces of a puzzle. Like they're not put together, but as you say it, they start coming together. Praise God. She said, I know if I can touch his clothes, I'll be well. She took another piece. I know <laughs> if I can touch his clothes, I'll be well. Praise God. Take that word. I know this word is working. It's working in my eyes, working in my bones. It's working in my shoulders, working in my insides, whatever. It's working. The word is changing. The word is life. Life is greater than death. The life of God is resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. So if it raised him from the dead, it will raise your body up. Speak it. Say it. The Holy Ghost works with his word when you put it in your mouth. Amen. Believe it. So it got her words got her up and going out of the house, and she got through the crowd. She did what she said she was going to do. So your words will move you to touch Jesus' clothes. It will move you into the very presence of God, into the very, my goodness, <laughs> right now. The life of God is flowing in you. It moved her out. It moved her in the presence of God. And then she laid hold on his clothes. Verse 29 says, Immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source, and suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of the distressing ailment. And so she felt that power come in. Receive the power. Say it. Thank you. I receive it. I receive that power now. And as you begin to praise God, it changes your feelings. You feel the power of God working. I've done it so many times. So I remember one time I had a horrible headache. It's just a horrible headache. And I began to do these things I'm telling you. And as I began to praise God, praise God, that headache had to go. And it did. She felt in her body that she was healed. In verse 30, it says, Jesus, this is Mark 5:30. Jesus, recognizing in himself the power proceeding from him, had gone forth. Isn't that interesting? There was power proceeding from him all the time, all the time, in his clothes, in his being. He was so full of life. Wow. He, he was like a a power source, you know, just resonating. With, ooh, ooh. <laughs> wow. He was, just think of God on the throne, how powerful he is. And then Jesus comes to the earth, and he has this life in him all the time. It's ready. It's available right there. But somebody has to lay hold on it with faith. It says here in the Amplified, he felt in himself, he recognized in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth. So it was proceeding from him all along. But once she laid hold on his clothes, it went forth. So God's not, I mean, you're not waiting on God. He's waiting on you. Reach out. Take a hold. Let your faith lay hold. You know what you might need to do? is tell somebody else. Um, I'm just seeing this. You might have a friend on the phone. Tell them 
The power of God is working in me. Did you know that by the stripes of Jesus I've been healed? Did you know that the power that raised Jesus from the dead is working in me? He sent his word to heal me. Did you know? Just begin to tell somebody else what the word of God to you says. Testify. And as you reach out, that's reaching out. That's laying hold on the power with your voice. That's your action. Hallelujah. The power of God that's in him will go forth into you. God is a spirit. You are a spirit. The power of God and his word are spiritual power. It is spiritual. And so it can be received with just your mind or your emotions. But as you put the word of God in your mouth, which is spirit words, you're putting God in your mouth. You're putting the power that raised Jesus from the dead in your mouth. <laughs> wow! It's got to change your body. And you will feel the power. And Jesus felt the power going from him when she touched him. And he said, who touched me? Who touched me? I wonder if he really knew. One translation says, uh, he studied the faces in the crowd to see who it was who had laid hold of his, who had made contact with him. When you feel the power of God, it shows up on your face. <laughs> Hallelujah. When anybody gets born again, they receive Jesus as Lord. Do you remember that? Something happened. God came in. Light came in. His life came in. You went from being angry, you had love instead. Wow, it happens in just a second. It doesn't have to take long. And he studied the faces in the crowd to see who it was who had made contact with him and said, who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? And she said, me, me. And he saw her and he drew her into his circle. He said, tell me, tell me. Tell me. And you know, um, you don't have to be in a big meeting to receive your healing. Just you and the Lord in his word, you make contact with him. And he wants to know. He wants to hear you talk. He said, tell me your story. He wants to hear your story. And she told him all her story. She told how she had lost all her money. She told him how she had been 12 years in her house. She was outcast. She was depressed. You know, she was so sick, but she heard about him. She told him. That's how we wrote it. It got written in the Bible. And she told Jesus, Jesus wants to hear your story. And sometimes when you're sick or you're in pain, you just need to tell Jesus. There's an old song, I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. No, you're not supposed to. <laughs> Tell him. Hallelujah. And then she told him how she pressed through the crowd. She told him how she reached out and laid hold on his clothes. And it was like, you know, have you ever had that electric um, shock? You know, what is it when you're like walking on carpet and the atmosphere is just right? It's a shock. You touch somebody else and you go, Phew, wow. Wow. That's what happened. It was just a moment. There was some power flowing in her. Your faith is power. God gives to you faith. Don't say, I don't have faith. Romans 12, 3 says, God has given to every person a measure of his faith. So when you start saying, take your faith to a new level, I believe, I believe the word of God is talking to me. I believe I'm reaching out. I'm laying hold on uh, 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bear my sins in his own body on the tree, that I being dead to sin should live to righteousness, by whose stripes I was healed. You're laying hold on the power of his word. He and his word are one, and the Holy Ghost works with it. And there will be like a spark of energy that will go into you. You've made contact with God. Hallelujah. And so she told Jesus all of her story. Wow, I wish I could be in the crowd to hear her tell that story. 
and how Jesus must have looked at her and said, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> he was so happy. You did it. And then he spoke to her further. You know, when you talk to Jesus, when you reach out and touch Jesus, he will talk to you. He will communicate more to you. Maybe you've received a word from God, but as you get in the word here, you're meditating on his scriptures, what's you talking to me, you know, he wants to tell you more. And today there's more that the Holy Spirit wants to, to reveal to you. That's called a rhema word. It comes out of God's mouth into your mouth. And it's supposed to be spoken Amen? So what Jesus said to her after she told him all of her story, in verse 34, Mark 5, 34, he said to her, Daughter, isn't that a sweet name? You know, daughter. That was, that was kind. He didn't just say woman, lady, but daughter. That shows relationship. He pulled her even closer. He said, daughter. Your faith in me, the Amplified Bible says, springing from faith in God, has restored you to health. So he confirmed her words. You have been restored to health. That bleeding has stopped. And then he said, now, next step. There's a next step. So we go to the next level in this process of healing. Healing is a process. It begins with word, his will, got what God has done, and then it goes to us hearing it, receiving it, believing it, acting upon it, moving in to lay hold of it from Jesus. He said, you've done this. He said, uh, your faith has restored you to health, but here's the next step. So there's another step, and here it is. Now, go into peace, the Amplified Bible. I love the Amplified Bible. Go into peace and be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. You know, sometimes uh, in our minds or in our bodies, if we've been sick for a while, we think sick. We think Oh, I need that medicine. Or, you know, no. God wants us to go so far away from sickness that we just forget how it was. <laughs> so he said, go into peace here in the Amplified and be continually healed and made whole. So peace, peace. What is peace? That's wholeness. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. It's shalom. It's who God is. He said, go into. Don't, don't just stay on the outskirts. You know, um, if God has done something for you, if he's healed you, don't just go on your merry way. No. It's, you'll be like that one leper who came back and knelt down and said, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You spoke the word that healed me. You delivered me. You brought me back from that pit. So going into peace begins with thank you. Thank you. And what you're doing when you say thank you, you're confirming that what Jesus has done for you is done. And you're going further and further away from that identity of pain, that identity of being depressed, rejected, wounded, hurt. <laughs> and you're coming closer and closer into the one who called you daughter. Daughter. If somebody calls me daughter, that means that's my daddy. <laughs> or my relative, somebody who loves me. God wants you to draw near to him. Just keep getting closer to him. Going into his peace. In the realm of God, where Jesus, you know, Jesus, wherever he walked, um, He's the Prince of Peace, and he brought peace. And it says that there was a real, and we talked about this, an aura around him of power. 
wherever he went. He, he owned the place. He had authority when he spoke. His words full of authority and uh, dominion. He wasn't afraid. He walked on the water in the storm. He spoke to the wind, stop, you know. And Jesus, this is him. He, his body even could not contain the power. It emanated from him. <laughs> but God wants us not to stay on the outside. He wants to come on inside. And through the blood of Jesus, we have access to the very heart of God. He doesn't want us to stand back. He wants us to come close and get in, stay, stay, live in his presence and be continually freed from distressing bodily disease or distressing mental stress or just uh, crazy emotions or, or uh, maybe it's your family that's all messed up or your finances, all of that. When you receive the word of God, whoo, that's step one. You're making some, some progress. You're getting in the presence of God. And you get in, when you get in the word, you open up your Bible. There's power emanating from the word. It comes off the page as you meditate. It gets in your eyes. It gets in your ears. It gets in your voice. It gets in your heart. And once it gets in your heart, you speak to mountains and they have to be moved because you have the faith of God. That faith came from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, it comes. You have it and it keeps coming. So maybe you have a measure of the God kind of faith, but your faith is intended to grow, <laughs> continuing to go to new levels and to take over your entire life. And so... Jesus didn't want this woman to go back into depression. He didn't want her to go back into the same lifestyle she had. He said, no, you go into peace. I'm giving you a new identity. Woo! Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. I'm so glad I have a new identity. I'm not sick. I'm not afraid of being sick. I have dominion in that realm. I'm not afraid of coronavirus. I'm not afraid. We have dominion. We take dominion. And as Christians, we do that with our family and everything. And so in doing that, we are completely free. And whom the Son makes free is free indeed, Jesus said. And how does that come? That's, I'm quoting from Jesus over in John. In John, he said, uh, here in, um, see where I'm at, John, he said, okay, when you listen to God's word, you are his disciple indeed, and then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's John 8 and verse 31. He said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall uh, become my disciple indeed, and then you know the truth. See the, the progression. We become a disciple, and then we know the truth, and then we come to a greater freedom. God doesn't want you to go backwards. We're not going back. <laughs> we're not going. We're not wishing we were back. No, we're going forward. And more and more freedom, more and more revelation, more and more truth. Praise God. And then he says, And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And so this woman was free. She was free. But Jesus said, There's a place in me. There's a place called peace. Go into peace and be made continually whole. There is a place in God that the devil cannot get into. Stress cannot get into when we can cast our cares on the Lord and we're living close to Him. My, my, God wants us to move. I just feel the Holy Spirit is saying He wants us to move even closer. There's a place, there's another level 
of faith, another level of freedom, another level of you living in the peace of God. What happens when you live in peace? Other people can see it. <laughs> You're not walking around with red eyes and red nose. and You've been crying and, and your head's down and, and all that. <laughs> But you're full of joy, and when you answer the phone, people go, oh, she's happy. Guess what? Your peace is contagious, and your testimony will be heard, and somebody else is going to get free because of you. <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory to God! Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And so we're taking the word that God has spoken off the page, putting it in our mouth, and it's medicine and life to our whole body, our whole life. We're going to another level of faith. Amen. The, the gospel is the power of God, and the message of the, of the gospel brings salvation and brings righteousness. And we go from faith to faith. I just feel like the Holy Spirit is saying, we're going to another level. And in the church, we're not backing up. We're not going behind the doors. We're not afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Amen. And uh, the gospel imparts righteousness. And righteousness brings boldness. You know, in Proverbs it says the, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. And I just see you as you're receiving the word of God. You're reaching out. You're touching Jesus in every area of your life, that the peace of God is overwhelming and surrounding you where you become an instrument of God's peace wherever you go. You know, the gospel is the power of God in Romans 1.16, unto salvation to those who believe it, for uh, as in it is written in the gospel, I'm reading the Amplified Bible, it says it this way, for in the gospel a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. So what the Holy Spirit is saying today is that you have used your faith. You have come in contact with God. You have received the power of God. It has made an impact in your life. You are telling about it. But you, by an invitation from God, and because of that righteousness that it's imparted to you, and by the power of God that you've received, your faith is springing up and going to another level of faith where you can believe God for even greater things. That's what God is doing. That's where Jesus, you know, Jesus is leading us. He's not just at one point. You know, he's our great shepherd. He's leading us. Do you understand that? He's taken us in the, in the kingdom of God, where we are in the church. We're not just going in circles like they were in the Old Testament, just going in circles. No, we are possessing. We have crossed the river like Joshua led into Jericho. We're taking cities. We are taking things that used to be too big for us to do. We have moved from one level of faith to another level of faith. And as you hear the words of God, as you take the word of God, as you speak the word of God, like Proverbs 4, 20, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my saying. Let it not depart from before your eyes. Get your eyes back on the word. Quit looking at TV. Quit looking at your body. Quit looking whatever. Look at the word because there's life that's springing off that word, the pages through your eyes, coming into your mouth, your ears hearing it in your heart. There, your, your faith is going to a new level. It's like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> Remember that? My goodness, this wimpy old guy, you know. When he got mad, something would happen on the inside. And this rage would come, you know, and he just start. How did he break out of all of his clothes? I mean, every time he got big, his clothes tore up. 
he had to have new sets of clothes all the time. I used to have rags in the house. <laughs> anyway, his muscles in his body got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And he would do this, you know, and then he would go after whoever was picking on him and win. That's how it is when you get the word on the inside. It's like Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I'm on the outside. <laughs> whatever enemy, whatever was on, uh, coming after you and picking on you, and my goodness, or picking on your family, you done made me mad, devil. <laughs> You're like Jesus. I come to set fire on the earth. <laughs> I can't wait till it starts. Amen. And like in the book of Acts, Oh, these people have come to turn the world upside down. Where is the church right now? That's where the church, that's where Jesus is leading the church, going from faith to faith. We are well able to take this city. We are well able to have church. We are well able to get out of the church walls and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We are well able to, uh, if we hear of a need, oh yeah, I can give some money to help that person in need. I have more than enough. My God is supplying all my needs. Come on, your faith is going to a new level in every area because God's word is full of life, Zoe, and it comes out of heaven where there's no limit. Hallelujah. There's all power in heaven and earth, Jesus said, is given unto me. And then he gave it to us, the church. Go in my name. Go in my name. Preach. Preach the gospel. And it says here in Romans 1, the gospel is a power of God to salvation, to healing, to peace, to every need being met, to soundness, complete wholeness. Hallelujah. The gospel is the power to salvation to everyone who believes. Are you a believer? Say, I'm a believer. Just say it all day. I'm a believer. I believe that. This. Well, I hope you enjoyed that teaching on prayer and healing. You know, my mom taught me how to pray. And she taught me her whole life. But she not only taught me by her words, but she taught me by her actions. I watched her pray. I watched her spend time with the Lord. I watched her receive her healing and fight for her life. She taught me by example. And I'm so thankful for that. Her book, God's Healing Word, is a must. If you do not have this yet, you need to get this book. She's teaching right out of this book. And she also shares her own personal testimony of being healed from an inoperable brain tumor where she wasn't supposed to make it. And if she did, she wasn't supposed to ever be normal again. But because of the power of the Word of God and learning and knowing how to activate her faith and stand on the promises of God, she is here today to tell the story and to testify to you and to help you also receive your healing. So go get this book. It is so, so good. It's going to help you. Also, Prayer and Healing School will air every single Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Time and every Saturday, 10 a.m. Central Time. It'll be on Facebook as well as YouTube. Don't worry if you missed it. You can go back and watch it again. And if you already watched it, I think you should keep watching it over and over because that word is getting on the inside of you and your faith will grow and increase. Until next time, have a great day.